Well, that's pretty much what we hoped to find when we signed up for a week-long cruise, starting in Tahiti and visiting five other islands in French Polynesia. It's a long flight to get there. Eight hours, three movies, and a bunch of meals later, we finally landed in Papeete, Tahiti. Loaded onto a van and made our way through the hot, humid night, passing shops and hotels, but we could have been anywhere. The hotel seemed nice, but nothing special. Until the next morning, that is. And we open the curtains. Wow. Welcome to Tahiti. Our ship was one of the Windstar fleet of what they call sailing yachts. About 150 guests and more than 100 crew. Comfy, well-designed staterooms and a casual, casual lifestyle. Coat and tie, absolutely optional. Excellent food and great, if pricey, excursion choices. Essentially, we visit a different island every day. I'm not going to give you a blow-by-blow, island-by-island account. They each had their own charm. But essentially, wherever we happened to be each morning, we either were out on the water sightseeing and snorkeling, or on land, four-wheel drive exploring and getting short courses on island life and customs. Our first day in Morea, we signed up for an island tour that I had booked online before we left. It was listed as strenuous, and we thought, right, I mean, how strenuous can it be? You're riding around in a truck. But we found out pretty quickly. And we also figured out real fast why our Windstar cruise was cheaper than at other times of the year. November, it turns out, is the rainy season. But rain or no rain, once we parked our truck and made our final trek up to the top of Mount Rotui, the views were well worth the rough ride and wet hair. Ah, the photographer's lament, just to see all this on a sunny day. Our guide had a great bilingual <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> Half of our tour mates that day were French. It makes sense. It is, after all, French Polynesia. As we made our way back down the trail to our truck, she pointed out a house way below us in the valley where the owners lived. Owners of the mountain? Yes, she said, and they make their living by charging tour operators Two bucks for every tourist who makes the trip. From the amount of four-wheel drive vehicles full of tourists we saw just while we were there, Julie figures the mountain was generating somewhere around three-quarters of a million a year. The legend is they make spot checks by binoculars every day to be sure they're getting an honest count. The next day on the island of Reatea, we were out on a morning excursion to check out the only navigable river in the islands. And later, the plan was to picnic at a motu, one of the tiny coral islands that arise out of the coral reefs that surround each of the major islands. The weather was, you know, it was just perfect. Blue skies, incredible turquoise seas. But as we approached the mouth of the river, those beautiful clouds were just beginning to turn gray and looking a little threatening. But after a blessing by our guide covered with traditional tattoos, we forged on, traveling up that river, surrounded by lush vegetation. It really almost felt like a Disney jungle excursion. Typically, we've been told, in the islands, a rain shower comes and goes in 10 or 15 minutes, and you're back to a sunny paradise. When we started hearing thunder and saw a lightning strike hit the water just ahead of us, it was obvious this torrent was no typical shower. Could everybody just say we're having a great time? Everybody look this way and say sex. <laughs> Picnic lunch on a tropical motu would have to wait for another day. Great snorkeling was one of our major enticements for coming to Tahiti. 
And initially, we were disappointed at some of the spots we'd stopped. We got banged up on the coral and saw no more fish than we'd see in Hawaii. But for two days in Bora Bora, we were dropped off at what can best be described as a petting zoo for brown-tipped sharks and rays. Petting zoo because they congregate here in the shallow water because the guides feed them every day. I have to admit, we were a little iffy about the shark, but our guide claimed they were vegetarians. <laughs> of course, they aren't. But apparently, they are much more interested in a guaranteed daily diet of a bite-sized meal than the funny little alien creatures in their midst with mask and goggles. great fun in my first try at underwater video with my new tiny little underwater camera. One of those one bedroom over the water bungalows at the Four Seasons Bora Bora will set you back $6,500. <laughs> That's for one night. Just getting from here to there in the islands is always a visual treat. Our there there this day was our own private motu, a tiny, lush coral island, maybe a hundred or so yards long. Got the fish, beef, and chicken. Got the rice, tuna salad, eh? A chance to kick back, enjoy a tropical picnic lunch, and get a little taste of Polynesian music and culture. If you thought tie-dyeing went out of style back in the 1970s, not in the island, or it's a thriving art form. The technique's familiar, dipping portions of fabric in different colored inks, but the Polynesians have a technique for adding figures and words. They take the finished tie-dye while it's still wet, lay it out in the sun, and then arrange stencils of animals and whatever else, and voila, the sun etches the designs into the fabric. The result, a traditional Polynesian wrap modeled by a wow. slightly saggy 77-year-old wow. you may recognize. Have you ever tried to open a coconut? I mean, it's a big job. Even with a sharp machete and a ball-peen hammer. Really? What? But all our guide needed was a willing volunteer, a big sharp stick, and a little leverage. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Maruru. For our last big Windstar get-together, there was plenty of good food, a weak punch, and a chance to compare notes on the different places we'd gone and the things we'd seen on the trip. But as the sun went down, it was time for the evening's main attraction.
know, there's always those adventuresome folks who are up to forgetting their inhibition and just going. No way you're going to get Julie out there. I was ready and willing, but somebody had to take the video. Yeah, <laughs> right. Not in a million years. Looked like our tour mates with the guts to get out there and shake their booty had a great time. But it was just the first act. A setup for the night's main attraction, Tahitian Fire Dance. to top that, but you know, every day there was something unexpected and out of the ordinary. Like these very weird and kind of creepy river years that would come right up and eat out of your hand. Or visiting a vanilla bean plantation. Hard to tell them from regular old green beans on the vine, but press them and process them and you end up with the best vanilla ice cream cone I ever had. Or yet another blissful boat ride. This time, out on a quiet lagoon to visit an expat American and his Tahitian wife and their floating pearl farm. <laughs> Where so you can shuck an oyster and get a beautiful thing. black pearl. It's a family operation. That's the mother-in-law putting finishing touches on a to-die-for necklace. So, it was hard to pick the best day or the best time. When we signed up for this Windstar cruise, we thought it would be one of those once-in-a-lifetime trips. And it's kind of worked out that way.